Gentleman from Ohio is recognized for one minute. Mr. Speaker, my colleagues, what are we doing? What in the world are we doing? The President asked for, for funding for our troops in Afghanistan and Iraq to meet our commitments to bring freedom to those people and to protect the American people. And here we are with a bill that has some $25 billion worth of spending over and above what the President asked for. And if that isn't bad enough, we handcuff our generals, we handcuff our troops, and we, we go about this backhanded way of trying to end the war in a backhanded way because the votes aren't there to do it in a straight-up fashion. Mr. Speaker, my colleagues, uh, we are sent here by the American people. We have grave responsibilities to them and to our allies around the world. And I understand that there are deeply held differences uh, over what's going on in Iraq. But all of us understand what we heard today from General Petraeus. All of us understand what we've heard over the last few months uh, coming out of Iraq. The real battle in Iraq today is not with the Iraqis. The real battle in Iraq today is with Al-Qaeda that has made this the central front in their war with us. And let's remember, we didn't start the war with Al-Qaeda, they did. And it's Al-Qaeda that's made Iraq the central front in their war with us. And if we're not willing to take on Al-Qaeda in Iraq today, when will we? When will we stand up to radical Islam that's spreading all over the world, endangering our allies and endangering our, our citizens, when will we stand up and fight? We didn't do it like other world leaders for some 20 years because America, like the rest of the world, looked up, looked away, and just hoped the problem would go away. It, it is not just going to go away. People who are, who are raised to believe that, that killing Americans and our allies and killing freedom and hating freedom is the answer to get to Allah is not just going to go away. And so we can look up and, and we can walk out. Uh, we can walk out of Iraq just like we did in Lebanon, just like we did in Vietnam, just like we did in Somalia, and we will leave chaos in our wake. Now, if dealing with al-Qaeda isn't enough of a reason to finish the job that we have in Iraq, what about the, the issue of the Iranians? Uh, the Iranians are trying to spew their hate all over the Middle East and elsewhere. It's the Iranians uh, who are bringing new devices into Baghdad to kill Americans and our allies. It's Iranians who are bringing funds and doing training to stir up sectarian violence in Baghdad. Are we just going to look the other way again? I say to my colleagues that, and I've said this before, every generation of Americans has had their obligation. Every generation of Americans has had their, their obligation to stand up and to protect our country, not for just today, but for tomorrow and for the next generation. You know, after looking away for 20 years during the 80s and 90s, what was America to do after 3,000 of our citizens died on 9-11? Just haul, hope it goes away? Hope that they don't care anymore? And I say to my colleagues that we have a solemn obligation to the American people to finish the job that we started. And while Iraq may not have started out as the central front in our war with al-Qaeda, it may not have started out uh, with uh, a fight against the Iranians, all of us in this chamber today know, all of us know, that this is the central front in our war with al-Qaeda, and this is the battleground with, with Iran. You all know it. You know it as well as I do. And the question is, are we going to stand up and do our, fulfill our obligation to the American people? Are we going to fulfill our obligation to the Iraqis who are struggling to create a, 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 a government of the people, by the people, and for the people. I think they're on clear notice 
uh, that they've got a job to do on their own. But if we step out today, we are ensuring that they will fail. We are ensuring that we will leave chaos in our wake. We will embolden our enemies. And it's our kids and their kids who will pay a very, very steep price. This is not the right thing to do, in my opinion. And I respect those uh, who have opinions uh, that are otherwise. But as I stand here as a member of Congress, uh, we need to think seriously about what we're doing. Think seriously about the message that we're sending to our enemies around the world and ask ourselves, is this, is this what our forefathers would have done? Is this the message that we want to send to the world? And I would suggest to all of you, it's not. We should vote no.